Okay, guys, welcome back. As you can see, we have a very special guest. We do have with us Cryptocito. And Cryptocito is a content creator. Check him out using the link below. But most importantly, he is a content creator all about Cosmos. And as you know, on this channel, we're getting more and more into Cosmos. So this is a great opportunity for us to learn Cryptocito. Michael, uh, big welcome. Uh, please tell us a bit about how you get into crypto and why you are Cosmos, almost Cosmos Maxi, not really, but almost. Yeah. So yeah, first of all, thanks. It's a big honor to, to be on your show. I've been following your stuff and I think you are like the creator of crypto YouTube. So a uh, big <laughs> honor for me to be here. Um, and, and also like you not only created it, but you also were pretty much the only one in 2018, 2019 when everything went down and nobody cared about crypto anymore to like be there every single day. And like um, that, that also helped me in my crypto journey um, because I got into it like I would say early 2017. Uh, and I, I thought like when I first saw Bitcoin, I was like, why are people paying thousands of dollars for a coin that you can't even see or do right. anything with? But it forced me to do my research, right? And uh, um, I, I started to learn about how banks work, how money works. Even though I was studying economics at the time, like I still didn't understand that basic principle. Um, and yeah, I think when I when I really understood that, it took me like six months, um, watched all videos on, on YouTube about crypto. And then, uh, yeah, bought my first crypto, had my first user experience, and that was actually amazing. So um, sticked around ever since. Um, even throughout the bear markets, um, 2018, 2019, I actually doubled down on my, my research, my, my time in, in the industry. And there was a time where I like, man, I want to like work in this industry, you know, like, and I also saw you like, yeah, yeah. man, you can actually like full time be in this industry. Right. Um, exactly. so when, when the COVID crash happened, I'm like, man, I just got to buy a, a camera and a microphone and like start talking about my experiences. You know, I like. I did everything wrong in crypto. I got hacked. I got scammed. I had coins on uh, wallets that I don't have access to anymore. I sent coins to the wrong address. Like I did pretty much every mistake you can do in crypto. Um, so when I started my channel, I had the intention to like just share that. And that was also the time I'm sure you remember, like when this Bitcoin maximalism, like this toxic maximalism, was like at the peak. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. I, I always thought like there's not gonna be just one coin to rule everything. I think there's a lot of great alternatives might 99% uh, might not work out but um yeah it took me then a year um to like you know build my first little audience and like first few followers and everything and then i i just made a tweet on on twitter and, right and and i said like man i have this atom in my wallet uh, that's like late 2020 i think early 2021 okay, okay. i have this atom in my wallet but like you know i, I don't know what what it does what it is um can somebody explain me explain me um and then to my surprise, a core developer in Cosmos, uh, Jack Sampolin, he just replied to me and like, yeah, let me walk you through. And this was even before IBC went live. Like, hey, I explained you what IBC is, what interoperability is and how Cosmos works and app chains and all these kind of things. Um, and then the rest from there, I guess, is history. Like I had more calls with him, more introductions to other developers. And that's what I loved about Cosmos. It's a very welcoming space. Um, not too much toxic tribalism against also other ecosystems. They're very focused on building and there's no central organization that's ruling everything, right? Like the community is super active in Cosmos. I'm sure you, you've seen some tweets. Um, sometimes it gets a bit heated, but I think that's also part of the game. And um, yeah, I just love being part of it. And then just, I don't know, like organically, I just double down on everything I do, right? Like on my content, focusing more on Cosmos. Um, yeah, yeah. Then on, uh, I started a validator, right, uh, with two other guys, good friends of mine. Um, when we validated on over 30 chains now, mostly in Cosmos. Um, and then Cosmoverse, right, which you can see the yes, now yes, evolved yes. as the annual conference in Cosmos. So yeah, that's kind of like the journey and yeah, super excited and about it. I, 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 I love this journey because anyone can anyone can be part of crypto. Just be active in projects, help out, do content. You can, you and you will know more than 99.99% of people in the world. And like you say that, you know, I created crypto YouTube. When I started, there were many YouTubers already and it kind of felt, oh, maybe I'm too late, you know. What well, what can yeah. I contribute with? But there was uh, crypto with uh, like Crypto Zero. There was box mining, there was uh, Amanda B Johnson but that was like <laughs> even years before me so uh, th that's a very good start education and then being active in communities and but let's dig, in, dig into the cosmos philosophy so so as far as i know you have all of these app chains 
where instead of, for example, uh, building a DAP on ETH, you have your own custom chain for your DAP, and then you have this protocol that can transfer assets between all of these different uh, uh, app chains. Uh, and let's maybe start there with uh, the big overview. If I'm building an app chain, uh, the first question people will have is what about security? Like I have to do my own security. I cannot, because on ETH, I, I, I can do roll up say, and I peg myself into the ETH security and I, I gain that. So on Cosmos, how does that work? Is there shared security or you're completely on your own and you have to figure everything out? Can, do you know that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so um, the first choice that especially big projects use, right? Like DYDX, for example, is now moving over to Cosmos. They're big enough and they have a lot of economic support and, and backing and all these kind of things to like spin up their own validator set and then they have their own security model, right? And you saw also like early projects like Osmosis and Juno, like they were one of the first app chains that also took IBC, which is this interoperability protocol that connects all these sovereign blockchains. Like these projects took IBC to the market, right? So they had a lot of organic growth and traction. And I think at that time, Cosmos was also like, okay, is this actually gonna work like on a technical layer, right? It was not that interesting. But now I feel like it's, uh, the cat is out of the bag and it's getting more and more interesting also for investors and like, you know, people are more more excited about it. Um, so that's but, why- so, actually, but, but Michael, so let's say I build something on ETH. I can be a yeah. normal developer like yeah, alone yeah. and I can publish something on ETH and it's gonna be secure. And if I want something faster, I can use a layer two that in turn is is uh, yeah. powered by ETH. So let's say I want to do an app chain. Can I do yes. it alone and it will be secure or or no? Uh, I mean, how would I saying, go, go you about can, it? You can do it alone and it will be uh, secure like Osmosis did and Juno, right? But you can also use what's coming out now. That's the big feature of the Cosmos Hub, which is the app chain of Atom um, interchain yeah. security, right? Which is kind of like this shared security model um, that you were saying. Um, and the way it works in Cosmos is that um, through governance, the community can basically decide and the validators if they want to onboard a new zone, a new consumer chain, that's like the equivalent of parachains and Polkadot. Um, like if you want to onboard a new consumer uh, chain to be secured by the Cosmos hub, and that would bring them, I think there's like currently around a uh, billion dollars in like security to their chain. Um, and then Atom validators would also validate on that consumer chain, right? And we already have uh, Neutron, which is um, a smart contract platform coming to the uh, Cosmos hub. So on top of that consumer chain, which is secured by Atom, you can build applications on that smart contract platform, right? So it's really yeah, interesting, yeah. Um, like the models uh, in terms of security, but then you also have like native smart contract platforms like uh, Juno, right? Um, and then you have uh, Agoric, which is building a JavaScript smart contract uh, platform. Um, FMOS uses the EVM, right? So you have like a variety of different security models um, some are just like Ethereum, some are, you know, you build your app chain, you have your own set, and some are like shared security, like in Polkadot, for example, right? Right. And I mean, in many ways, it, it seems that the vision of Cosmos and ETH, that they are now coming together, they're, they're so similar now. At least I see a lot of similarities where in ETH, we've gone into this roll-up uh, paradigm where it's kind of, it's, it's like an app chain. It is exactly like an app chain. That, and right now, many roll-ups are, are used by many apps, but we're also seeing, for example, Arbitrum. I think they did a roll-up just for gaming. And soon there's probably going to be roll-up just for different applications. Uh, because it makes sense from the perspective that if I build on ETH, I get this general purpose infra it's it you can do anything with it but it also means that it's not really tailored for anything specific it's not like the best infra for anything that uh, that is uh, that is specific application so th that's why app chains in my head make sense but how do you see this have you also thought about that divisions are coming together into into a very similar thing or what do you think is the biggest difference between where ETH is heading and where cosmos is heading right now yeah, I mean, I think it's like this roll-up versus uh, app chain uh, kind of like a roadmap that both ecosystems have. But like I say, it's like coming closer to each other, right? And we also have Celestia launching, um, I think, in a couple of months. And they're also um, uh, bringing roll-ups and uh, settlement layers and connecting all the dots here. So I think it's going to be, yeah, um, very close to each other. That's why you also see a lot of um, Ethereum people are very positive and excited about Cosmos and there's a lot of crossovers there, but yeah, um, I'm, I'm personally focused on, you know, a lot of things inside Cosmos. 
Um, so it's always hard for me to keep up up to date uh, on every single thing, and especially because I'm not really technical. Yeah, yeah. Like from a technical perspective, when I see, you know, like Vitalik just posted this uh, Ethereum roadmap. Like I, I, I didn't even really read about it, but um, yeah, I, I think it's all coming together. Yeah, like you say, and makes sense. And and so using osmosis, so you have to first deposit into it. Uh, so you have all the different chains, and then you kind of deposit like on uh, like on Binance, but it's, it's of course essentialized. Uh, do do you know how that works? Like how how does this uh, cross chain tracing work? The tracing only happens on the osmosis chain, and then you like bridge over the assets via IBC. Uh, do, do you know how that mechanism works of this you know cross chain liquidity, yeah. cross chain trading? Yeah. So IBC is like a light client bridge, and um, it doesn't have any sort of uh, admin keys or like centralized uh, you know way that can be exploited which we've seen left and right throughout defi summer and like in the past few months right so it's yeah. a light client bridge and uh, it's implemented on a bunch of chains right now over 50 chains and within these um ibc chains you can just do ibc deposits and withdrawals right and the best way to do that is either on osmosis itself um, or you can also do it within Kepler, which is the native wallet in uh, Cosmos, right? Uh, the most yeah, adopted yeah. wallet. Um, so, and then that's also for me, like from a UX perspective, when I first used uh, Kepler, I'm like, holy shit, this is so much better than MetaMask, right? They're, like since then, <laughs> there's no way back for me. It's faster, it's cheaper. You can do cross uh, yeah. cross chain yeah. transfers, and the way you do it, you just go on osmosis.zone. You connect your Kepler if you created one. Um, you go on assets. You click deposit you see your balances on that native chain. Let's say you have 10 Atom on your on your Cosmos Hub chain, and then you can see that balance when you click on deposit. Um, always leave some for the fee on the native chain, but then you deposit, let's yep. say, 9 Atom, and you can use these 9 Atom on Osmosis and trade with it, provide liquidity, um, do whatever you want. You can also deposit it on, on Stargaze, which is an NFT marketplace in Cosmos, and buy cool NFTs there. Like, Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. And Osmosis is really like the, the first killer application for IBC. They proved yeah. it works. Yeah. That brought billions in, in uh, volumes and liquidity. And um, yeah, it's, it's an amazing experience. Like, uh, you know, and, and you don't really like have to click too much. It's like very user friendly. And like, that's what I really love about it. Right. And so when it comes to, to IBC, you can, it's a messaging protocol, right? It's, uh, yeah. uh, I'm thinking, does it share li can it share liquidity also across chains, or is always that you have to move? Like for example, Osmosis is its own dex, but let's say there is another uh, Osmosis, like there's another dex that does a similar yeah. thing. Uh, so can they mm -hmm. share liquidity between each other? That if I do a big trade on one of them, it can also tap into the liquidity from the other one, or are they separate? And I can only yeah. move assets between them, kind of like in uh, layer twos in ETH right now. So, so, is it fragmented or it's unified when it comes to liquidity? From my understanding, it's possible through IBC also to like build like an aggregated dex. That's what I was waiting for a long time. Right. I think uh, we just don't have like anything near to the liquidity on Osmosis that we have on any other Cosmos dex. Um, there's a few of them, like Crescent. Um, but yeah, I think. Once we see this more, I think that's actually one project that is like currently working on on an aggregator DEX. Um, but like on it, I don't know like how much technical efforts that requires and how big of a role IBC plays in that. Um, but I know it's coming, and I'm really excited for it. And I think that that makes a lot of sense, right? But um, yeah, but yeah, the thing about it is like it's very early days still. Like you you don't see that many applications that you see on Ethereum yet. But I think it's uh, growing faster and faster. So yeah, I think it's coming. Because that's one of the things that don't really work right now on ETH. There's no shared liquidity across different uh, different protocols. Uh, that uh, the Uniswap on layer two is not connected to Uniswap yeah. on layer one. Uh, yeah. And so if someone can build, let's say, on, if you have shared liquidity on Cosmos between app chains, it's a game changer. Because I know that if I, if I do a new chain, I now get all the liquidity and all the benefits of all other chains in terms of uh, asset asset trading. I can just you know plug and play into into my own protocol. So that would be that would be cool. And in terms of different um, uh, different DApps, uh, uh, can we do some demos maybe uh, if you if you are up to that, Michael? If we can show them because now we've mentioned a few of them. We've mentioned Osmosis. We've mentioned Stargaze. It would be cool to have also a demo so people see. 
uh, how easy it is if you want if you want to do that or yeah we can just look at the websites so people know where to go and how to get started like what what are the first steps to yeah. to take when you enter the cosmos ecosystem because uh, and, and until it is practical it, it's a bit difficult uh, to grasp and yeah, yeah, and guys, all of you who are watching, if you have any questions about Cosmos, let, uh, leave them in the comment section because uh, we're going to do more interviews with uh, Cosmos ecosystem. So uh, happy to to take your to take your questions. But the first thing, of course, is the Kepler wallet. Uh, K, K, K E P L -L -R. Yes, K P L R. Yeah, I mean, it's very easy to create a wallet. I don't know if you want me to share my screen. Like I can just show uh, Osmosis or, or Stargate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, please share your screen. Okay. Exactly, it's enough. Let's just look at some uh, at some big dabs on. Uh, and actually, on, like, uh, <clears throat> yeah, what what I do on my. Let me see. Does it work? Can you see? It? Ah, no, it doesn't. Uh, but no. I heard that sound that like like an error. Yeah. Okay, so, send me the links. I'll I'll share instead here. Okay. But so what I do actually on my on my channel is like I make a I have an investment like challenge where I just put some money into some IBC coins and yeah. as I do that like I, I mean that that's catchy right but the point of it is to make tutorials to like in real time walk people through where to click how to get airdrops right there's a bunch of airdrops also in in, in Cosmos um, and just walk them through how to provide liquidity how to do a trade how to do, um, buy an NFT maybe on on uh, Stargaze right like. I think those things right. are super important. So, so he, here, for example, you have the osmosis. Yeah. So, uh, so this is osmosis, this is yeah. yeah. And I mean, in the beginning, when Osmo, Osmo launched, um, they, they did a big airdrop for Atom holders, and uh, there were big staking incentives and APRs. Um, now it's kind of like cooled cooled down a little bit with the crazy APRs, um, but you can still um, trade, right? Like here, you see, for example, all the assets that are listed on um, on osmosis. And also statistics in terms of in terms of uh, liquidity, right? Obviously, that big drop is when when Terra collapsed, which was one of the yeah, biggest yeah, cost yeah. of change, by the way, um, and uh, volumes and all these kind of things. But it's still not bad. Um, I mean, we're still what is it currently two hundred twenty five million uh, dollars in volume right, uh, right. liquidity, um, and yeah, you see the biggest pools where where it has the deepest liquidity. Um, you can also uh, trade um, stable coins there, right? USDC. I think they will also add a stable swap feature uh, soon. Um, and um, yeah, you can trade over 50 IBC coins there. Um, if you go back and, and to the, best the, thing, yeah. the best thing with uh, Cosmos right now is that you can, you know, like all projects, <laughs> you, you can really like know all projects uh, right now that that are that are important. Uh, like, for example, like Secret Network, you have this Juno, yeah. Stargaze. There are just a few of them. So you can really get a nice overview and learn it. and. Uh, uh, and, and have a good grasp of the entire ecosystem. But yeah, sorry, you were saying? Yeah, if you go back on assets um, on the tab before. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> so that's what I said earlier. Um, for example, let's take a native Cosmos coin. Let's take, for example, Atom, right? If you click on yeah. deposit, it will check your balance um, on the Cosmos Hub chain, right? So it will see if you have any Atom on the Cosmos Hub chain. And if you have right, any, right. if you would connect your wallet now, it would say, hey, you have 12 Atom there. Um, and you can say, okay, I wanna select 10 Atom and I wanna deposit them on Osmosis. And it takes just a few seconds, right? And you basically made a cross-chain uh, transfer. Right. In that but, yeah, but do you know yeah. how that works? Because on ETH, the way it works is that you lock up uh, assets on one chain, so you cannot move them. And then you get new minted tokens on the other chains. So it's not like the assets move. It's just that they're locked up on one chain yes. and then new minted coins are created on the other chain. And then you can reverse this. So is that how it works on um, yeah, that's here as well? How, yes, that's, uh, that's also how it works. Um, but it. yeah, I mean, through that light client, and I'm not you know technical enough to like explain you uh, in terms of like security, um, uh, how yeah, yeah. exactly that works. But um, so far, it's been transferring billions. And also, like, because it has various relayers and every channel, like, you have to open a channel between these different chains, right? So there's a, an Atom and Osmo channel right now, an IBC channel. Yeah, um, that's what, what, what I was going to ask. Let's say I have a new chain. I, I use Cosmos SDK, I create a new chain. Uh, how do I get here? Uh, can, can Will people see me here instantly, or I have to, like, write to Osmosis to add me, or I add myself? How does it work? No, you, you actually have to do it through um, on-chain uh, governance and also, um, you know, your chain has to mm. be compatible with all that stuff. 
Um, but yeah, Cosmos is very famous for having very, very active governance. Uh, I think Osmosis already has uh, hundreds of on-chain proposals and it only launched like uh, one and a half years ago, like 358 is the but, latest. But that's interesting. So each asset on Osmosis, you need to get approved to, to be here by the on-chain governance. It's not like anyone can come with a new chain, right? And and just launch it here. Uh, like, I mean, but this is like... like what you're looking at right now is also the um, osmosis.zone, uh, the main front end. Um, there's another front end called uh, frontier.osmosis.zone, and that's where you have mm -hmm. a okay, lot okay. of assets. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, they, they want to keep yeah. this one clean. And um, yeah, I think. But yeah, I, I understand. Uh, I, I'm on the front end, <clears throat> I understand that. And it's fine. Uh, it's, it's the same on Uniswap. You, you, you cannot see yeah. all the like scam coins, but you can always add an address to see them. Like you can always find them if you want. But on the technical level, and um, uh, 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 on the technical level, can any chain transfer assets to any chain? Like, for example, here you said I can deposit Atom from Cosmos chain, yeah, yeah. Uh, from Cosmos Hub yeah, yeah, to yeah, Cosmosis. Sure. Yes. If I create sure, yeah. my own chain, can I now move Cosmos back and yes. forth between my own chain and Yeah, back? yeah sure. Yeah. yeah, you can do that. Like, if you go on frontier.osmos.zone, you can see like a bunch of uh, coins, like random coins. Also, I have no idea what they are, but um, yeah, you can, uh, you can do that. that? Yeah. The Frontier. Frontier.osmosis.zone. Yeah, I will share you that. Perfect, thanks. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. So it's like the crazy, crazy twin. Yeah, that's like the Wild West edition of um, <laughs> of uh, Osmosis. Yeah. All permissionless as yeah, but it seems that you can yeah. do anything here. Basically, yeah, yeah. makes sense. <clears throat> Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So this seems like an untapped, I mean, to me, it seems like an untapped territory, especially if you're a builder. You see how there's a lot of potential in Cosmos, but it's it's also very uncrowded. Like the liquidity is not that big, like, like you saw, like we saw here, 200 million. It is, it's not zero, but it's, it's not big. But at the same time, the community is active, like there's so much potential. So if, um, if I was a new builder of a DAP, uh, I would definitely check out... Uh, uh, ch check out Cosmos. And my question, first question will be, do I do in my own app chain or do I build something on like an EVM chain in in the Cosmos? Like, um, is it EVM OS and uh, some, some other one, right? Uh, yeah. So what do you think? Like, why would anyone build EVM? Like, you, of course, you can copy paste your code from Ethereum, but what is the point? Like, if I want to use my Ethereum code, <clears throat> I can do that anyway on, on ETH and the uh, rollups. But if I want to go yeah. to Cosmos, what is the point of just copy pasting my ETH code? Do I, or I get the same the same benefits of this, you know, cross chain assets, I guess. What do you think? Yeah, of course. I mean, EVM OS, you can also, I will share you the link also, like they also have a, a kind of like dashboard where you can um, access. And um, what they're doing is basically you have, um, let me actually send you the other link. <clears throat> thanks, thanks. Mm. So, yes, FMOS is also IBC enabled, right? So you also have all these benefits. You can make an, uh, a, a deposit of your e, um, FMOS coins onto Osmosis and trade it there, right? Or provide liquidity with it. It right, has a right. uh, <clears throat> six or six second block time. Actually, FMOS has, I think, two second block time. Um, it's powered by Tendermint, which is the consensus algorithm uh, in Cosmos. Um, it's built, um, you know, with all these features and benefits that Cosmos provides on a bigger picture and like IBC is just the flagship protocol of Cosmos, but mm. um, there's also Tenement, the Cosmos DK, like a lot of other moving parts. And um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think for a developer, it's like more interesting to build in a faster, more scalable, interoperable um, EVM chain than, you know, if you if you lost solidity, then if you were to, to build on, uh, yeah, something slower. <laughs> right. And so uh, now we also have the Stargaze, which is NFTs on the Cosmos. And how does this work? Because you have NFT standards on ETH, like ERC721, ERC ERC1155, and that standard is used across all EVM chains. Then you have Solana, it's a bit different. And uh, on Cosmos, there are many different chains. So there's no such thing as, you know, as the Cosmos standard, because Cosmos is just an infrastructure for launching chains and transferring assets across chains, right? So when when, when we're looking at this, NFT marketplace, like what kind of NFTs is this? Are these NFTs that are 
year 2071 or something completely new and how does that work across all of the different chains in cosmos the standards yeah i mean it's their own um uh, nft standard and what you look at the the bad kids like that's probably the most famous um, nft collection right now on on stargaze um, but yeah, they also launched in a very decentralized way, um, had an LBP on Osmosis actually. And um, yeah, Stargaze nice. is kind of like the premier NFT marketplace in Cosmos. Um, but like personally, I'm not too deep into, into this whole NFT jungle, um, but I always see things pop up left and right. And um, I think also from an NFT perspective, um, you know, Cosmos is a good place to go because yeah, um, they're also going to be i don't think yet um, fully interoperable and also like uh, compatible with ibc and everything but i think um that's something that will definitely come and then um yeah you can own your nfts on various chains yeah but who i mean who created this nft standard do you know that is it the stargaze like they created an nft standard for their chain only and then other chains are free to adopt it but uh, is that how it works or is it i that, think that's uh, how it works because, yeah, because also like the, the Stargates team is, you know, Cosmos OGs. They've been around for um, many years. Um, and you yeah, see, yeah. like, if you look at, for example, that's why I said in the very beginning, like, Cosmos doesn't have a central organization. Um, actually, the um, Ignite or like Tendermint, which is a company also, and the Interchain yeah. Foundation, um, they kind of like are undergoing a lot of restructuring. But a lot of their former like team members and early, early members, they just started their own projects, right? Like, Sunny was the founder of Osmosis. He used to work at Tendermint. Um, Shane, who is the founder of Stargaze, um, and Jake, like they have been all around for many years, maintaining the Cosmos SDK, um, building IBC, right? Like FMOS, um, Federico from FMOS has been a core IBC engineer, right? Mm -hmm. Like these guys are all Cosmos OGs. <clears throat> so they have all just gone their own route. And um, yeah. But sorry, I when think you say FMOS, is it EVMOS? Is that how we pronounce it? I don't it? know. What is it? I think it's, it's FMOS. <laughs> but yeah, F first, F yeah. FMOS. <laughs> FMOS, no, yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's got to be EVMOS, I guess. It's like EV, but I don't know also. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, maybe it's FMOS. But uh, listen, so if people want to start, number one, get the Kepler wallet. Uh, number two, uh, start messing around with Osmosis, do some trades, buy some NFTs on um, on Stargaze. And let's say I want to buy an NFT on Stargaze. L let, let me actually share it again. So let's say I, I have my Kepler wallet and I have some Atom there. And then I go here to Stargaze. Uh, I need to like deposit here, right? I need to, because this is its own chain, Stargaze, right? It's like yeah. an app chain. Yes. So yep. I, I will have to like deposit my Atom here and then I can go wild minting stuff, right? Um, yeah, I think also currently um, everything is priced in stars, um, which is a native coin. Like every app chain also has their own coin for security and all these kind of things. But also here in this case for um, to purchase NFTs. So I think you just connect your um, wallet and then it will show you your stars balance. And then uh, that's the, the premier way right now to buy NFTs there. Um, but if so, I don't yeah. have stars, then I then I, ha I have my Atom in my Kepler wallet. Then I go to Osmosis, deposit Atom swap it to yeah. stars then i go to stars right, to the and I deposit chain. but and yeah. i will have to deposit stars from osmosis into stars right yes but that's very seamless like that works very got it, easily got it, got it. yeah makes sense so, but let's say yeah. i have let's say i'm using like 100 chains i'm i'm like everywhere i'm i'm using 100 chains i have a bit of stars here and there does the wallet tell me like here are all the chains where you have the this token or do i need to add each chain into the wallet to let it like no by the way check this chain also maybe i have something there do you know how that works yeah i mean um if you if you use Kepler now like they also have the web wallet right they have the extension but they also have the the web um wallet yeah. and if you go on dashboard like you see an overview of you know all your balances and then you say okay i want to see all my balances on the cosmos hub chain and you see whatever you have there um, like it's yeah. it's getting more and more um, you, you know friendlier to to see everything to track everything. Um, there's also great explorers like Mintscan.io um, where you can also see um, wallet addresses and you can also play around with um, volumes and all these kind of things. But yeah, um, on Kepler you, you 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 should be able to see all of that at one glance basically. And and finally, let's say if I want a bag of Cosmos ecosystem. What do I buy? <laughs> Not financial advice, but which coins are my first uh, Cosmos bag? I mean, I guess the first one is always Atom, right? Atom is the one that started everything. 
Um, the longest chain, they're currently proposing Atom 2.0, which they introduced at uh, Cosmoverse last month or one and a half months ago. So it's like a new oh, vision. Oh, by the way, sorry. Let's, let's uh, talk a bit about that also. So with Cosmos 2.0, what changes? Because my understanding is that there are more fundamentals to Atom because now it's like more benefiting from the ecosystem, this coin. Is that correct? Can you summarize what, what, it, what happened with Cosmos 2? Yeah. So in an app chain world, the question is, what is the application for the chain in Cosmos, right? For the Cosmos hub. Um, and yeah. so far, I think it has been as a launch pad for IBC and, you know, bootstrap also other communities like Osmosis, all these kind of things. But now the question is, okay, what is the next step, right? And um, yeah. Cosmos, yeah. Cosmos as like the grand vision to build this internet of blockchains is already fulfilled, right? So now it's like, okay, what's the next step? So Atom 2.0 is a proposal to bring interchain security to the Cosmos hub, which is like everyone is fully aligned that this is the killer application for Atom, right? And that would make Atom um, similar like the relay chain in Polkadot, you know, a security source for other chains. And then another big thing is that they want to, um, yeah, ad adjust or, or like propose a new direction for the, for the tokenomics of Atom, because right now it has a dynamic inflation between seven and 20%, which is packed to the staked ratio of, of atoms. So when there's less than two thirds staked, the inflation goes up to incentivize staking. Um, now they want to get rid of this and they propose a way how atom inflation basically goes to zero over the next years um, and will be replaced by native protocol revenue, right? Primarily from interchain security. Um, they also propose um, the allocator, which would make the, the Cosmos hub chain more like a, a decentralized um, funding source for other IBC chains so that Atom also has a stake in these other chains. Um, and also the scheduler, which is maybe um, uh, a bit more long-term, but it's kind of like an, an MEV solution where Atom would also capture value from that. So Atom 2.0, to summarize, is basically just about maximizing the utility for Atom. Um, you see there's a lot of governance discussions, a lot of feedback from the community. I made a bunch of videos about this, um, talked to the founders, the, the authors of the paper, and um, yeah, it's um, it's coming together. And like, you know, it's like, yeah, a, a new direction for Atom, yeah, better yeah. tokenomics, like you say, and, and launching this killer application, which everyone is waiting for so so uh, so long time. So makes sense. Okay, so I have Atom. What what is next uh, coin in the bag? I mean, now it's like okay, like I don't know. I mean, you can you can do Osmo. I think Osmosis is a yeah, it's yeah, a great yeah, yeah. They have strong product market fit, right? Um, bunch of users, high volumes, like incredible team, right? Um, they're really, really good. I love Osmosis. I think it's the best decks in the world, the best experience. Um, so Osmo, and because Osmo yes. is also like the native coin for the Osmosis chain, it also captures value from, from these kind of things. And it's below its ICO, right? Let's see, or it's launch. Uh... I mean, they never really did an ICO, but um, yeah, they did a kind yeah, of like a like reverse, this... reverse race. <laughs> but... When it launched, like, basically, it was at four yeah. or something, and now yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's so it's yeah. It's, I mean, th th this below, kind yeah. of deal you never had. Well, you had better deal five months ago, but yeah, it was no <laughs> one gets the bottom. <laughs> but this is this is yeah. uh, historically a very low price, so that's good. Yeah. Uh, w which more? Which more? I would say um, Fmos and Stargaze, the one that we talked F about. Fmos. Is that? Oh, sorry, sorry. EVM. <laughs> In my head, it's EVM. <laughs> <laughs> EVMOS, uh, right? Um, they um, they still have to prove themselves and like onboard a lot of depths, um, but yeah, they're also really good, um, strong team and all these kind of things. Stargaze as well. We we walked everyone through the the marketplace. Um, I think those are the big four. Right. Um, and then you have Juno, which is a, a bit more wild, um, fully permissionless, fully community owned, um, very interesting stuff. Um, it's a permissionless uh, smart contract platform. Um, and so, um, okay, so permissionless is what is the difference? Isn't that what EV, EVMOS is that you can build smart contracts? And this is something else, or it's uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, so Juno is building uh, Cosmwasm. Uh, it's built on Cosmwasm, mm -hmm. which is like the native smart contract platform in uh, you know within the Cosmos ecosystem. And um, yeah, it's just a, a different type of of platform. Um, but yeah, they, they absorbed, especially, you know, after Terra collapsed, they absorbed a lot of that traffic from Terra. Um, oh, so they have a stable coin, <clears throat> right? Or 
No, they don't have a stable coin. But I mean, like, you know, a lot of these applications that were building on Terra, like, they migrated over to, to Juno because there was also, like, a decentralized right. fund to, to incentivize kind of, like, these uh, projects that were drying out on F on Terra to, like, bring them over to Juno. Um, but why but yeah, did people I mean, build on Terra? Is it, wasn't it because the stablecoin is there? Or was the reason? Or was it because they had smart contracts and people just... Yeah, did people use it for like normal, like smart contracts that are disconnected from from the stablecoin UST? I mean, like there was a lot of DeFi stuff around, you know, this wild experiment with UST and Anchor and all these kind of things. Um, yeah. But yeah, there, there were like a lot of applications on um, on Terra, um, and now they all need a new home, right? Because Terra collapsed, and like a lot of them um, left. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some of them are still there. A lot of them left. And it seems like Doe and, and you know the Terra team, they want to make a comeback with also their version of shared security. I think Doe just released a post a few days ago. But I think a lot of chains are like done with Terra and uh, they need a lot, lot of contracts or, or projects. So they needed a new home. A lot of them went to Juno, but also some of them went to Osmosis, right? Osmosis actually also has permissioned Cosmwasm, like a permission smart contract platform. Okay. So you can also build... DeFi stuff on Osmosis, right? And for example, Mars Protocol, which was pretty big on uh, Terra, um, they um, are moving now to Osmosis, right? And like make the DEX on Osmosis better. Um, so yeah, I, I think a lot of it is coming together. Um, but yeah, but, sure. yeah, aren't yeah. I supposed to do my own chain? Like, uh, why should it I build on chain? chain? Yeah, but if, why should I build on Juno if I can build my own chain? Because, like I said in the beginning, right? Like uh, it's hard. It's not that easy to like set up your own security to like attract validators to um, have an economic, uh, secure, and sound chain, right? It's it's not that easy, um, unless you are DYDX and you can you know just do like this and everybody wants to validate on your chain. Yeah, yeah, but, um, yeah. yeah. But I think Mars okay, actually wants to launch their own chain at some point. That makes sense. So basically, if I have a big community and I have capital and I can attract, then I can do my own chain. But then that's, uh, yeah. You can also like, you know, launch on something like Juno or Osmosis and then you have product market fit and then you can still later on, you know, move away like like DYDX was doing, right? Like they also yeah, yeah, yeah. use kind of like Ethereum, like first on the mainnet, then on uh, some L2 and then on Stockware and now they spin off into their own chain, right? I think it's very dynamic. Like it's not set in stone that like once you use in Juno, you can never leave, right? It's like it's very dynamic and, and things always evolve constantly. So makes sense, makes sense. But listen, Crypto City, I think we got a nice overview. Do you think we missed something? Like, is there some topic, some aspect of Cosmos you feel that we should we should uh, mention that we haven't yet? I mean, I think if you're a community member of any other ecosystem right now and you look at uh, at Cosmos. Um, I think it's very different to any other ecosystem because the community is actually super active, very passionate. Um, a lot of discussions around any changes, right? Like we talked about Atom 2.0, the community is yeah. very, very active in the decision making, actually. Um, and I never saw this in any other ecosystem, right? Um, also, what we do with Cosmoverse is like the, the biggest conference of the year in Cosmos. We could never do this in any other ecosystem, right? DEF CON is done by EF. Um, Breakpoint just happened here in Lisbon. It's done by the Solana Foundation. Um, I, uh, you know, Cardano has IOHK running everything. In Cosmos, the community is super active and can contribute a lot of stuff. And that's what I love. So um, it's maybe a little bit of a different ecosystem, but um, a lot of people that join the community, they, they just stay. And if you use Kepler, Osmosis, IBC, you're like, holy shit, this, this stuff actually works and it's pretty cool. So yeah, um, I invite everybody to check it out play around with Osmosis, with Kepler, um, Stargaze, right? And yeah, I think from there on, if there's any questions, like people can always uh, text me on Twitter or all this yeah. kind of thing. I, I have a final question. So let's say there is this uh, EVMOS. So on EVMOS, probably there's going to be Uniswap like or some uh, Uniswap copy, right? Yeah, it's already, yeah. It's called so, Diffusion, yeah. Okay, okay. So Diffusion is on EVMOS. Yeah, those assets can can they be traded on Osmosis also? Like, why should I? Or is it gonna be like separate? You know, we have this Uniswap clone on EVMOS, but they're not in Osmosis. Or is it gonna be still connected with Osmosis? This tracing. I mean, everything that is happening on FMOS is happening on the FMOS or EVMOS chain, right? So you yeah. can just 
Um, and I think that goes back to what you said earlier, like shared liquidity. Um, I think that stuff is definitely coming at some point. But um, yeah, um, as of now, if you want to um, you know, bring your assets from Diffusion or from, from FMOS over to Osmosis, you have to go through IBC. Yeah, um, but yeah. OK, fantastic. Guys, follow Cryptocito on YouTube, on Twitter, everywhere. And yeah, looking forward towards this uh, bull market. And uh, we will, mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll do many, many follow-ups and probably live streams as well in the future. Uh, and today we have a dark day in crypto with FTX and all of that crap. <laughs> so uh, yeah, wow. br brighter, brighter days ahead. Definitely brighter days ahead. I'm looking forward when we can when we can uh, see all of the cosmos pumps in in real life and hopefully also be be part of them as this ecosystem <laughs> grows. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I mean, there's a lot more, right? There's like 50 plus chains that are running right now, and there's like hundreds in the works. So there's a lot of alpha, you know, a lot of exciting new projects, big teams also um, that are building in Cosmos. So I think Cosmos never really had a crazy bull run like Avalanche, Solana, right, Terra. Um, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I think it's coming. I mean, I, I, I feel like the Cosmos, like I said earlier, like it has this decentralized community, um, you know, decision making, but that's also probably in crypto, especially a very, you know, very sustainable. And it has this organic growth of the community and of adoption and developers. And I think that's probably the most sustainable way, right? Otherwise you have something flashy and shiny like, like Terra that comes out of nowhere. And then the, the guy just gets, you know, too big, too fast and, and maybe too greedy yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then it implodes, right? But I, I don't see that risk in, in Cosmos because the decision-making is so decentralized and there's no central organization that runs everything. So yeah, let's see how everything runs the next, the next bull run. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks a lot, Michael. Cheers, man. Thanks for having me.